There are five habits that keep people from the middle class in the red race, leading to being stuck in a job that they might not even enjoy that much anymore, but they simply can't stop because they have to keep their lifestyle running. So in this video, we go through those habits so you can avoid them. Number one is confusing assets with liabilities. Now assets are investments that grow in value over time and then create an income or a capital gain. So they put money into your pocket and they grow your wealth. Those assets, for example, can be stocks, real estate as in rental property and also fixed income like bonds. Now liabilities are things that cost us money, but they are confused with assets because they also have a value. And the biggest payment of people in the middle class is their home. So paying the mortgage for their own financed home. And in general, there's nothing wrong with financing your own home, but often people just buy it too expensive. They look too much on what they want and not on what they can afford. By the way, you don't even need to finance a home. You can plan for it and save, and then you can pay it outright. That's not very common, but it is possible. And the second biggest payment of people in the middle class is their car. And the problem with the car is that it uses value so quickly. For that reason, I think the best version is to also pay for your car outright. And I've also heard that the car price should not be more than three times your net monthly salary. Or at least you should not pay more than 15% of your monthly pay for everything the car involves. Now, I will never argue against the car if you really can afford it, because I'm German and Germany is the number one car exporting country in the world. But the important detail here is if you can afford it. Fun fact for the middle class in Germany, so the 50th percentile where half of the population owns less and half owns more, a car makes almost 30% of their net worth. That's how important cars are in Germany. Number two is falling trapped to lifestyle inflation. Now people from the middle class spend 100% of their income. And I think it starts with this thinking of, okay, now I make good money, now I can buy the home, buy the car, eat out in restaurants, go on vacations more. And then this kind of thinking continues every time they make more money. And that's exactly what lifestyle inflation is. And the tricky thing is that once you have adapted to a certain lifestyle, it's hard to go back because then it feels like a loss and we don't actually handle loss very well. And also the problem, the more money you need in your everyday life, the more you need to save and invest in order to actually get out of the red race and still keep the lifestyle. And the simple solution to this is to only spend what comes after saving because that way you can still increase your lifestyle, but you save at the same time. By the way, for more tips on building wealth and financial independence, I invite you to subscribe to this channel. Number three is depending on one income source. The middle class has one and only one source of income and that is their job. And as I heard Erika Kahlberg say, one source of income is just too close to zero and she's right. As you might have heard, the average millionaire has seven different streams of income. And in the beginning, what you invest will not be enough to cover your living expenses or the lifestyle that you want to live. But as you keep growing your wealth and build those different streams of income, it may start with your savings account covers your gym or your insurance bills. Your stock investments at some point pay for your vacation. And that way you make yourself independent step by step from your job. Even if it's not your intention to quit the job. And another downside to just having one source of income being employed is that you have the most exposure to taxes. Only if you take more than one, let me call them identities, like not just employee, but also maybe landlord, maybe lender, maybe freelancer, maybe business owner, then you can benefit from tax advantages. Number four is underestimating the wealth creation tool. Now, even though only having one source of income, people don't pay enough attention to it because your income at the same time is your number one wealth creation tool. So everything you save and you invest and you build your wealth starts from there. And not paying attention to it can be to never ask for a raise. In some jobs like mine, when I worked as a doctor in the hospital, the negotiation of the raise was done by like an external institution, the labor union, and they negotiated, I think, a three to 4% increase each year which seems to be the average. When there's no labor union doing it for you, you have to do it yourself. And I'll link a brilliant article about this from Ramit Sethi down in the video description. Not paying attention can also be to not switch jobs when you are stuck with your salary. Your salary can actually increase 10 to 20% if you decide to switch to another employer. And if you do that once or even more than once, that is quite a difference in income. And the more you earn, the more you can save and invest and the sooner you're out of the red race. 
Now that doesn't always work. For junior doctors, for example, it was pretty much everywhere the same in every hospital. Then alternatives could be to relocate, maybe even in another country, or it can also be to take on more hours. By the way, I already made a video about how to increase your income if you want to check it out later. And I think another aspect to this not paying attention to your income is to not develop further skills that help you to earn more because sometimes an extra certificate is enough to boost your income. Number five is not saving and investing enough. Now, I recently discovered the statistics where Americans say that they think they need 1.27 million to retire comfortably, but they only have saved up around $100,000. Now that is a 10X difference between where they are and where they think they need to be. And that means not saving enough neither for the presence, like for example an emergency fund, nor for the future, like saving for retirement and not investing. I can imagine that one aspect of this thinking is that you can always save later when you earn more, but then you know lifestyle inflation gets in the way and later becomes later and later and later. And also not being aware that this, this building wealth is what gives you choices and what gives you security and also ultimately freedom. There are indeed several movements that aim exactly for that financial independence. You can learn more about them here. I hope this helped you at least thinking about getting out of the red race. Thank you for watching and I hopefully see you in the next video. Bye bye.